Welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. This is the show where you get life tips, business tips, friend tips, all of the tips that it takes to have a successful, happy life. And I'm so pumped because today's guest is the most requested guest of all time. And you guys don't even want to know what I have to do to get him to come <laughs> on this show. But it's my husband, Chase Craft. But first, before we get into today's interview slash conversation with him. I want to remind you that Crafted Entrepreneur has a brand new coaching program that I'm so excited about. We actually ran this coaching program back in 2019, 2020. And when I took it away, people were honestly devastated. <laughs> they were so mad at me, including Chase, that I shut this coaching program down because people absolutely loved it. You want to know why? It's because I made life coaching affordable for all. You know that if people want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, which by the way, right now I have a completely long wait list. I'm going to raise my prices again. It's multiple six figures. So I wanted to train people to coach like me so people could get amazing results in their lives. And we have done that again. And we have made life coaching affordable right now in this economy for anybody to get life coaching. So we're going to help you create your business. We're going to help you just make your dream life an actual reality by having massive, massive support. So all you need to do is go to kaylacraft.com forward slash coach to check out the new program we have just for you. And if you use the code podcast, you're going to get 50% off your first session. All right. I love you guys so much. Make sure to go check it out. All right. So Chase Craft is in studio today. Welcome, Chase. Hello, hello. Did you know I married you for your last name? <laughs> yes, you've told me that before. I'm joking. Okay, but it's just funny. So today we have some big... That's like shaped like even our kids' names, the yeah. CC. CC. I told the boys, like, you have to marry somebody that has a C, like first name, because they can't let the tradition go down. That'd be third generation. Yeah. Third generation has to keep it alive. <laughs> And Channing's like, no, I want to name my kid Peter. And I was like, no, you can't name your kid Peter. It has to be a C, na C name. Cooper will be the one that carries that Yeah, on. Cooper will be. But Channing is like, he wants yeah. to name them all the disciples. He's like, Peter, Simon, Paul. That's what he wants to name his kids. Kid. Like, wow, you're going to have a lot of boys. Anyway, our kids are cute. But that's not why we're here today. We're here today because last time you were on the show, we talked about a potential move I've announced since then that we are making a move and people want to hear from your perspective. Let's give them a real life update because I feel like I normally don't talk about things on the podcast where I have like an open wound, but right now it's like gaping and I'm it's bleeding. <laughs> and this will probably be the juiciest episode you've ever listened to, honestly, because I'm so raw right now that I can't even, all my media training in the world can't even like make it sound good. But I think it's good because people will see I'm still building business, still doing the thing while I'm going through a major life transition that I'm not like necessarily like excited or happy about. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know you tell me on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well tell everybody, maybe they haven't listened into the last couple episodes, what is our life update and why is it happening? Yeah. Um so those of you who do and possibly don't know, we live in Newport Beach, California, um, which is an amazing place to live. And we are going to be making a big life change and life transition to um, move to a place that is very different than Newport Beach, California. Um, but I, I truly believe that, you know, as the man and leader of my home that this is a, the best move for for our family even though that it's going to be hard um you know it's going to come with lots of challenges and lots of grief in the process of leaving a place that we love and we have great friendships and um all those things but what's m most important to me is is family and time and quality time that we get to spend with our kids cooper has four summers left he doesn't really have four summers left he's gonna be our we are gonna be best friends with him when he's an adult yeah we're i'm have saying every summer i'm saying like uh, i hate when people say that because it's like not i'm true. not saying it if like that way parent, they want to hang I'm out i'm saying that 
you know, at some point he's going to leave the house and hopefully get married and have his own life. Right. Um, and so I want to make sure that, you know, that in the years that he has left sitting on our di- at our dinner table every night that <laughs> we don't sit at the dinner table every night. It's a metaphor Okay, <laughs> that he's in our home, um, that we're getting the, the most quality time. And these are formable years for young men, right? As they start figuring out who they are, becoming men. Um, I want to make sure that me as the, as the father and, and that I'm able to continue to guide and support him in that transition and, um, I want to make sure that I'm home for that and I want to make sure that he's home for that. And so, you know, though, for mainly those reasons, um, you know, where we're at currently just doesn't make sense for our life. Right. Um, some people think that we're crazy and all that stuff, but you know, my goal as, as, a, as a dad is to give all of our kids as many opportunities as they, as they can. That's why we are entrepreneurs. That's why we chose this life to have the flexibility to do whatever we want, whenever we want with whoever we want. Um, you know, which, which is then also played a role in giving our kids what, you know, all the, all the opportunities that they, that they want and desire for their goals. And obviously, you know, many of you know that, that Cooper specifically, um, you know, is pursuing hockey at a high level. Um, and so, you know, in order for us to be able to support him in doing that and me to be home with the kids more often with the family, us to have more family time, um, it just makes more sense for us to be in a different location. So did you tell not him that, the location yet? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's been a big lead up, you know, a lot of you probably know because we talked about it a couple, few episodes ago on the podcast, um, but uh, we are moving to Minnesota. Yeah. Oh, God. Even you saying that, I want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be a very big change for the family. Um, but, you know, many of, many people probably know, but many of you don't know, like from September until mid-March, early or late February, I was gone probably 15 days a month. Um, and I just don't want to have to live that type of a lifestyle anymore. So it's going to allow me as I build my company, my headquarters is in New York right now. Um, you know, if I decide to keep it there, then, you know, uh, you know, a two hour plane, plane ride from Minnesota to New York is a lot more manageable than, a five hour plus a three hour, you know, time difference in, in California to, to get out there as often as I need to. Um, and it also, you know, gives me the opportunity to potentially move the headquarters there, which is, you know, cheaper, cheaper real estate. Um, so it's, uh, going to be a a big life change, but I think it's going to be in the end, it's going to be for the good and for the better, because we're going to have the ability to have, have more flexibility with, being able to do stuff more as a family right now. We just don't have that. And so why did I get my makeup done for this? I don't know. I'm like, I didn't really expect to cry, but yeah. I mean, when you say it like that, it all makes sense. Obviously he's a very good salesperson. You guys, (laughs) he has really sold this Minnesota thing hard. And I, we've been talking about moving out of California for a while. Yeah. Moving out of California. Yeah. Yeah. Florida, like here I come. Like yeah. I will pack my bags right now and go to Florida happily. I mean, I'll still like be crying and be upset, but like I need sun and I am very huge on water. So it's a very much like I feel like I'm going into the lion's den right now, even though, <laughs> okay, everybody listening in that's from Minnesota, it has nothing to do with you. It's just more of I don't like being cold. Like I'm cold right now and it's 70 degrees in Newport. Like yeah. I, I don't like being cold. So that's my biggest like fear, I think, right now. Um, is and I need to be outside like with people and so I feel like if I'm cold I'm just going to be like a little hermit inside the house you know what I mean yeah and Charlie's the same way as me so anyways but I have decided to my kids will respond how I respond and so I'm just trying to like look at it like it's going to be an adventure it's a season I love everybody in Minnesota but I will not be staying there because I'm coming back here (laughs) as soon as Cooper's done with high school 
and he's off to college or wherever he goes. But like we're coming back here. So I feel like it's a season. and I'm going to make the most of a season and meet as many people as I can, like have as many adventures as we can while we're in Minnesota. And I think that's the thing is like I know it'll be good for our family. It's just like I love my life here, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So but you got to like give up. You got to give up something in order to experience something new. And I think change is nobody likes change. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't like change either. You're like the most routine person I know, which is also why you want to move to Minnesota, because you've been so out of routine with all the travel and stuff like that. Yep. So I'm tired. Yeah, you're tired. So on that note, I think what are we doing to because they say the hardest thing uh, that you can do like in marriages is move, buy a house. What are the other things they say? I mean, I think it's those two things that they're like really hard. And we happen to be doing both of them at the same time. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of, you know, this isn't our first time moving. Obviously, you know, we we moved here um, and that presented, you know, even though we we're moving to one of the most, you know, beautiful places in one, America. It's the most beautiful place yeah, in America. It's that presented, uh, you know, a, a lot of challenges as well. I had a hard time adjusting to, to life here. Um, you know, which I think is also played a little bit of the, of the role in why I, you know, another reason why I am motivated to, to make a change like this as well is, I'm gone so much. It's hard for me to really create a lot of relationships here too. Um, like I have good friends and I have in, you know, a lot of my friends are hockey guys cause that's who I spend the most time with, um, which is, which is great. Cause one of my best friends is, you know, one of, one of, and his, he's moving to Minnesota with us. Yeah, exactly. Yay, lucky is, you. uh, is Cooper's best friend. So that works out great. So we travel together all the time. And so that's, that's awesome. But you, you've obviously developed more like real, like deep friendships here because you know, you have, you have more time here, right? You're not, you don't have the travel schedule that I have. And, um, you know, so that's obviously one of the things that, you know, you're going to grieve a lot more than I am in that area because, you know, and I think guys are just different in that way too. Like, you know, I, I still have, you know, best friends in Bakersfield and we lived there, you know, moved from there six years ago and stuff. So, um, but that is one of the reasons, you know, one of the other reasons why I, I want to, um, you know, make a change is so that I'm not gone so much that it's hard for me to really develop friendships. So it's like, a, you know, we have a, we, we have a Bible study that I'm unable to attend with, a, you know, a number of, of my friends here that they meet weekly and I'm not able to attend it because I'm either traveling or have practices or whatever, even though you might go in to it a little bit hesitant, resistance, kicking and screaming, if you will. I think the main thing is that you and I are, are united in in what the ultimate goal is for the family, right? Um, you know, if we're both going into it and, you know, um, we're not on the same page, um, even though, you know, you, you not, might not, uh, you know, be ex- super excited about the situation, um, if we're on the same page, you know, one that's going to be better for our marriage. Cause we're, you know, we get to make this decision together. We are on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'm just more excited about the, 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 the change than you are. Uh, but we get to be on the same page. And I think that was, that was really good for us when we moved to, to Newport was like, we both made that decision together and we were both excited about that. And, and even when, you know, I had a harder time adjusting to, to life here, um, it, it would always come back to, we made, we made this together. Nobody forced me to come here. Like I didn't, you know, and so I didn't, I couldn't be resentful of you. You know what I mean? Like, even though I wasn't, I'm not saying that like I was or anything like the, those things that come up, resentfulness and you know, whatever, like when you make that decision together and there's unity with, with those decisions as a couple, as a, as a, as a married couple, then, you know, you have to constantly remind yourself that of like, nobody forced me to do this. I, I made, we made this decision together as a couple and, um, you know, no matter what I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, revert back to that. And, and what do people do if they're not on the same page with their spouse? Because I feel like a year ago I would have been like, bye, like you can go by yourself. Even though I loved you a year ago, I would have <laughs> just been like, absolutely not. Like I'm not going, but I feel like the more that God has transformed my heart and just being like, you have to let Chase lead you. 
<clears throat> and I like being led. So it's not like it was just like I was resisting that because I was scared that you're going to fail me, you know, because most men in my life have failed me. And now I understand that you're not going to fail me. And like I, I really have let you take the lead in that. Don't you think yeah. I've changed? Yeah. I mean, I'm still a work in progress, but I feel like a lot of people have that question. Like, I want to be on the same page with my spouse, but he's this, he's that, she's this, she's that. You know what I mean? What would you say to that? I mean, realistically, I am going to fail you because oh, yeah. I am I a mean, sinner. Yeah, that's true. And, and I'm going to do my very best to have that not be the case, but realistically that is. And, and you can't look at me as your savior. Yeah, right? that's true. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, you have to constantly look to to Christ as as your savior and and see grace through the eyes that Christ sees grace through in in our relationships and our marriage. And though it is my responsibility to lead you well, it's my responsibility not to be reckless um, in those decisions. Um, at the end of the day, I'm I'm a sinful being, and I am going to you know make the wrong decision, not bad or sinful, hopefully not super sinful decisions, but I'm, you know, there's a possibility that I am going to make a wrong decision and, you know, your hope can't be in me at the end of the day. I think that's good. I don't feel like my hope isn't you. I guess I should, because I feel like I trust God so much that even if this is the wrong move for a family, I feel like he will prosper it anyway, because he knows our heart and our intention in it is not... It's not malicious or anything like that. So I believe, I mean, it says that in Deuteronomy that God will prosper our mistakes. And so um, I'm just trusting that in Romans 8, 28, it says like, you know, what the enemy comes to kind of mess up, God's going to turn for his good and glory. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, you know, like knowing that God will use this as a testimony. I mean, I hope it also is our ministry moving to Minnesota that we get to change people's lives through the Lord, you know? Yeah. That's how I'm kind of looking at it right now. It's like, okay, well, it might not be what I want to do right now, but it's like I have to be selfless in this moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, hopefully it gives us more time to be plugged into a local church too because I'm not going to be traveling and gone as much as I have been, you know, which has been a struggle to really get plugged into a local church, um, you know, so that'll be Hopefully that'll be a, another added benefit. Okay, but back to the question, because I really want practical tips for people listening in right now. Cause <laughs> <laughs> and, because, like, there is that person that, like, you know, they just cannot get on the same page with them. So what should they do? Whether they're a wife or a husband, what is something that they could be doing to try to get on the same page? Because you can't control the other person. I think it's open lines of communication with, with your spouse, too. It's like trying to trying to get – having an open mind – Right. Um, you know, there's lots of things that I don't agree with you on. Right. Um, it's not just it's not just you submitting to me. And there's a lot of things, a lot of decisions that you want to make that I might not agree on. But I come to the conversation. I think it's open lines of communication with one another, with one another and coming to the conversation, seeing the other person. Right. I think is is, is super important. Um, what does that mean? Seeing the other person? Just I mean, we you talk a lot about our inner child and, and childhood traumas and that kind of stuff. I think that comes out in when you see someone, you 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 know them, you know what they're scared of, what why they're making decisions that they're trying to make. And, you know, having grace on on your spouse as you see them in that way of like, okay, I, I see why they're making this decision. I see why they're, what's coming up for them internally to spur this type of, you know, decision that they're trying to make for the family. And then, you know, as you see that person, it's going to, you're going to have more grace on, on, on them, even if you disagree. And it could, it could open your mind to, okay, um, I understand why they're, they're coming to this conclusion. And maybe that, maybe because of that, it, it causes you, you know, in the conversation coming with an open mind causes you to then, you know, be open to, to getting on board with them on something like that. That's really good because <clears throat> that's really what unconditional love is. Mm-hmm. And I think the world tells people different, you know, it's like, do what makes you happy. Do like, you know, if they can't get on board with you and they don't raise to your standards, then you freaking drop them like a top. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's like, well, then you don't really know what love is because love is you're going to compromise on some things. Yep. You are because what makes you happy might not always be what makes him happy. But it's 
like this move like I do not want there's not any part of my body that wants to do it like not one part <laughs> of it but I understand that my husband is exhausted and that like I'm gonna cry <laughs> I don't know why I'm so emotional this morning but but I feel like it's because like you're such a, like the reason I married you was because I knew we were going to have a healthy family. And you know that like me, I'm like, I am like, that's like my number one fear is to have a messed up family. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so that was part of what made me want to like marry. It was like knowing he's going to be a good dad. And that's part of the decision that you're making is like you following through on that promise to be a good dad. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's why it's easier for me to say yes and do this, even though it's not like my dream life. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Are you, am I going to make you cry? <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm like, I see tears in your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is. Do you guys have tissue? Our other kids make comments about the fact that I spend a lot of time with Cooper and, and I hate that. Like, I don't like not being there. Um, you know, for all of Charlie's stuff and all of Channy's games and, you know, that, that I, I don't want that to have an effect on our kids, you know, their childhood and their upbringing of like, dad wasn't there, you know? Oh, I love you. And so, um, (laughs) we didn't know we'd be crying this morning. (laughs) A sacrifice needed to be made in order for that reality not to not to be a reality i'm like grateful that we're at this point where we can be on the same page because i do feel like even a year ago like we would not have been on the same page around this um but i feel like god has just transformed my heart i know he's transformed your heart and just like trusting him more like trusting that god like even though there will be suffering like we will suffer like it's not going to be easy not that moving to minute. It's, you know what I mean? It's not going to be an easy transition. Like we're also going to be away from your parents. Mm-hmm. But anyways, like there, there's going to be sacrifice. There's going to be suffering. But in that, like goodness will come out of it too. Because I think there's going to be like strengthening of character for not just us, but for our kids. Like if this is the, like, they haven't had a lot of hardships in their life. Mm-hmm. And if this is one of the, this will be a hardship that they have to go through. But I think it's going to make them like stronger. Yeah. I mean, you need to know how to make friends. Like that's a huge, like you've seen that in your business, just like being able to, that relationship capital Mm -hmm. will take you a long way, Yep. you know? And so that's what I keep telling Charlie. I'm like, you're going to have friends everywhere. You have your best friends in Bakersfield, your best friends here. You're going to have best friends in Minnesota. And she wants to go to Alabama for, you know, uh, college. Did you know that? No. Yeah. That probably won't. She just decided that this weekend. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Even though I love my tide, but I don't know if that's going to happen. She's Oh, she's all about it. And I said, then you're going to have best friends in Alabama. Like, you're going to have friends everywhere. And I think that is what makes life so rich is people. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what makes this place hard to leave. Like, it's not the ocean. You know, that's great. But it's people. Mm-hmm. I think that's so cool that that's what makes your life, like, so special, you know, in all the places. We'll just, you know, collect people almost. Yeah. <laughs> that we love and stuff like that. So I'm excited about that. That's one thing that I'm trying to like, that's helping me. And I hope this helps you guys listening in right now is your, the powerful thing that you own at any given time. And then it's free is your perspective. Mm. And so if you could own that and shift it and always look at life as why is this happening for me? Like, what is this going to do for me? You know, it's going to make me happier. And when I go, okay, I didn't know like moving to Newport six years ago that I would meet such amazing people. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, I I was excited to meet people, but I had no idea that I would meet like the most amazing people I've ever met in my life that are like sisters to me now, you know? And it's like, okay, if I, if I don't know that, you know, like going, if I know that God could do that here, he can do that there because God is a miracle worker. Like he can constantly blow our mind and we have to look at it like that and speak that out loud. Like, that's what I want to be true. Like, even though I'm devastated, it's also, okay, God, you're going to do something new. And he can't pour new wine into old wineskin. So we're going to a new place. He's going to do something new. And you have to go with that holy expectation, right? That God's got something for me here. And I'm excited about it. Yeah. What are you thinking? No, I was, I'm in, I'm in agreement. 
I also think that it's good for our for our kids to see us go through those things because we're we should hopefully be setting an example of what it looks like to you know to be outside of our comfort zone and have to put ourselves out there to make new friends and new relationships and like you said that you know your your network worth is based on your network right like how you know and and it doesn't even have to mean net your net worth in in a monetary sense it could be you know just that that's such a good skill to have um and that is the skill that that has propelled me and and you in both of our business relationships right and our businesses is who we know the type of relationships that we built um with those people and then continue to build upon um and i think it's good for our for our kids to to see that even, you know, moving to a new place, they're going to have the same struggle as we have. We're, we're going to be, we're going to be in uncharted waters together as a family and they're going to, you know, how you and I react to it and how you and I, um, you know, the, our perspective is going to be passed down to them. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, if we react to it in a negative way, we stay, you know, um, you know, like a hermit and, and don't try and go and, and make new relationships and new friends, then that's what they're going to do. Um, so. Mm-hmm. I have to become friends with hockey moms. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I'm excited for, I mean, I'm glad we got this update done. I hope it helps people just have the practical tips that change can be scary, but, uh, You've got to show your mind all the proof of how the change is going to be better, you know, and then it's going to be easier to step into it. So you've got to create that new vision for your new life. That's really what it is. And some of you guys aren't going through a move. You're not doing something as drastic, but you've got to have a vision for your future. And if you don't have that space right now in your marriage to dream about that, you guys got to make time for that. You know, that's why people say go on date nights. Chase and I don't really do date nights, but we'll do walks. We'll, you know, any mm-hmm. chance we get where we could be alone, it's like, okay, he wanted Starbucks yesterday and we jumped in the car 10 minutes to drive to Starbucks just so we could have that un- uninterrupted time together where we could just talk and dream. And we were talking about life, you know, and so it's like, don't take those little moments for granted to be able to just have that space to talk and communicate because I think communication is so important in your marriage. Yeah. And then um, the last thing is just, you know, if you're not able to get on the same page with your partner, I think that's way when you pray. I mean, you should be praying all the time anyway, but you just got to pray, you know, like pray, pray, pray. And don't always just pray for the other person. You got to pray for your heart, too, because Mm -hmm. like God's wanting you're in that marriage for a reason. And God's wanting to teach you something in that moment. You know, maybe it's patience, you know, and when you pray for patience, believe you're going to start getting situations where. (laughs) <laughs> you got to learn patience, you know, but patience is the fruit of the spirit. And so we want those things. And it's, it's amazing for our character to have that. Yeah. So just hold on to that hope that, um, God will do everything in his timing. Mm-hmm. Especially in regards to marriages, it's, it's, it's an easy cop out to just say, Oh, well, we're not on the same page, you know? And I think we live in such a instant gratification society mm-hmm. of it's, it's easy, you know, that's why divorces are so high right now, right? It's easy to say, oh, we just don't, we don't, you know, irreconcilable differences, you know, very easy to say that rather than, you know what, I, I, I entered into this marriage and this covenant with God and I'm going to figure out a way to work it out, you know, um, it's a lot harder, but I think, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, my, you know, I'm my husband or my wife is hindering my growth because they don't, you know, we don't see eye to eye. And I'm like, I think it's, I think it's the opposite. I think if you were able to find commonality and, and, and grow with your partner together and whatever that, whatever aspect that looks. So we've, we've experienced this in our marriage throughout our entire marriage. Sometimes you're on a big growth track and I'm, you know, struggling to keep up. And then other times I'm on a big growth pack and path and you're struggling, but, at, but we're both attempting that together. And, um, I think we grew more and better rather than saying, you know what, at this point when I was on my growth path, then you weren't, it's easier for me to say, you know what, I just need to let go of this relationship. I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have met up to you. And in, in instances where I'm on a bigger growth path than you, you wouldn't have met, met up, up to me in that way. And I think it would have hindered both of our growths. Um, Absolutely. So. I think that's what makes it a partnership is some people think you always got to be on the same, you know, track yeah and 
uh, as long as I think you got to be headed in the right direction, same direction as each other, but um, you might be just on a different, you know, what is it? Uh, what's the word? Not expenditure. Like how fast you're going. Speed, like how much yeah. effort. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Speed. <laughs> yeah. Different speed. You know, you're at a different speed. Yeah. Than one another. But loving each other no matter what. That's really what you said when you said your marriage vows. Mm -hmm. Is I'm going to love you no matter what. Like even when you're at your worst. Because it's really easy to love somebody when they're easy to love. Yep. It's so easy. But it's hard to love somebody when they are freaking hard to love. When they are down in the dumps. And they, I mean, you've been there where it's, and I've been there too, where they're depressed, they're negative, complaining all the time. Like, you know, it's hard to love somebody like that, mm -hmm. but that's like literally your marriage vows was, you said, I will marry, I will love you no matter what, Yeah. you know? And so when that going gets tough, people want to cop out because it's hard. And it's like, no, I mean, obviously there's certain circumstances where it's, if it's abusive and all that kind yep. of stuff, but this isn't like, you just want your partner to be on the same growth track i just think it's kind of crazy to give up a marriage because of that yeah when love can heal a lot mm -hmm. I've got, like when you love somebody when they're at their worst they eventually will get to their best and they're going to remember how you love them yep you know and it's going to help them go farther and i think that's also like what's happening with you right now like you i feel like I feel like I'm still growing, obviously, but I'm kind of in this, I have a lot of life stuff happening that's more like, you know, my mom, my momhood, you know, is really like my focus right now. And you are like, just, I mean, I tell people all the time, I'm like, you're blowing my mind with what you're doing. And I hear you on these calls. I see you all traveling and, you know, having your retreats for your employees. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I cannot, I, I can believe it that you've done all this, but at still the same time, it's like, I mean, it was just a couple of years ago. You were down in the dumps. Yeah. Depressed. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just crazy, like, how when you just don't give up on somebody. Mm hmm I'm going to cry again. <laughs> and a lot of that's, a lot of that has been knowing that you, you know, even though there has been times where you're like, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> like, is this thing going to go anywhere? Um, you were still like believed in me and supported me in that. And, you know, having that person in your corner, that's like, you know, gonna, gonna continue to support you and push you is, you know, why it's been successful. And, but I haven't been like that a hundred percent of the time. No. And I think that's important for people to hear because even if your spouse doesn't support you in what you're doing right now, like if you're truly convicted about it and you think this is what God wants you to do, you've got to keep going Yep. and just pray that God changes their heart. Yep. You know? And like pray like for little small wins along the way. Cause I think honestly, like if you wouldn't have had some wins, like especially recently, like with like us making the move, like I, I would be way, way less likely to be excited about this. <laughs> yeah. But I see, I see like, okay, we need a headquarters in Minnesota. Like yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. You know, I believe in that vision now. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, well, thank you guys so much for listening in. I'm done crying today. I can't handle it anymore. <laughs> I love you. Thank you for coming on. I love you too.